Good morning. How are all my favorite people? Oh, fantastic in the Lord. Awesome, awesome. On awesome. my own, not so good, but in the Lord, great. <laughs> uh, I know what y'all saying. He ain't up there. How come he not up there? Did he get fired? No. No. I did, right? Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good, good morning. morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. sing this song today before we start uh, and let's do this acapella it's uh, 445 people need the Lord Told me I gotta love you. Now, I know what y'all say. I'm like, oh God, 
told you that doesn't mean that you can actually love me. But I do. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. You have a very special place in my heart. Um, as Brother Brian was so eloquently speaking on today, it's a, it's a shame that within the body of Christ, love does not flow as good as it should. Amen. Love is not shown in the way that it really should be. Many times we find ourselves um, fighting uphill battles. Mm -hmm. And you ask this question, why do we fight these uphill battles? Well, part of the reason that we fight them is because we had, in, in Sunday school, I just gotta tell y'all, you need to show up to Sunday school. If you're not able to show up to Sunday school, I do understand, uh, we miss you when you're not there. But we have some tremendous studies and some tremendous lessons that today, y'all need to be here. One of the reasons why is society today has pushed us to the point to where we compromise our thoughts, our actions, our goals, our mindsets. You don't think we do, but we do. We compromise. And you say, well, what do we compromise? Well, we compromise our stance. We compromise how we act, how we walk, how we talk, how we live. We will, for the sake of fitting in, compromise those things that make us us. You know the worst place where that happens? Right here. Right here in the church. I know what you're saying. What? Not in the church? Not here. Not as the Arab Baptist. Mm -mm, not as the Arab Baptist. Yeah. Even as the Arab Baptist, it happens here. Oh, I know. I know what you're saying. Not me. Lord, it can't be me. Can't be me. You know what they all say? First one to answer usually is the one that did it, right? Yeah. Usually you'll tell them yourself. It's a shame that the church has fallen victim to something very, very unfortunate. And it's this. Christ gave us a command. What was the command he gave us? He told us that we're to love one another. In John 13, 34, 35, he says, A new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you. By this the world will know that you're my disciples by the way you show love one to another. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like a lot. But it really is. It's a mouthful. Do you realize that? Do you realize that when we say the word Christian, what are we really saying? We're saying Christ. that I am walking like Christ, or I'm trying to emulate Christ, or I'm trying mm -hmm. to be like him. Well, to be more like him means you got to be less like you. Right. Oh, hold up. That's, that's how fights start. That's how fights start. Okay, I want a good, clean fight. No getting below the belt. Got you on this side. Got you on this side. Let's get it on. We fight all the time. Do you realize that you fight all the time? Mm -hmm. I have a question for you. Where do you get your information from? Who do you get your information from? Because as, we, as I was going through and preparing for our sermon series, Ignition, God just was like, okay, bro, I got you. <laughs> I got something for you today. I was like, what is it, Lord? He said, uh, we're going to spend some time talking about wisdom. Mm -hmm. Wisdom. Now, I, I think I'm a pretty smart dude. But I think I'm a pretty smart dude. I can go lie. I'm the first one to tell you. I'm probably the dumbest crayon in the box. You know, I'm that one that you keep sharpening, no matter how much you sharpen it, it don't get right. And you just over there spending all your time, and then you find out it's the wax one that don't work. It don't have no color to it at all. Now, see, I'm the special box. I'm that one special box. Where everything else is circle, I'm mm -hmm. the block in there. And you like blockhead, why you do that? But, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say I heard that from teachers. Okay, yes, I did. But I'm, I'm just going to tell the truth. Somebody got to tell the mm -hmm. truth. But you got to ask the question, where do you get your advice from? Who do you listen to? Where are you getting that from? Well, guess what? If you do not know, we are studying the book of Jeremiah, and we're also studying the book of Revelation. And I do want you to know that um, you missed an excellent, 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 excellent class on Friday. Mm -hmm. this one. Uh, if you, we did send it out, I did email it out, so please check your emails. Um, if you have it, please watch it. Password is in there. All you gotta do is click on the link, enter in the password, you can watch it right there. And I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, you are missing a blessing if you are not in there. 
Sunday and Wednesday nights we are in Jeremiah and we have all these other books, these supplemental books that we're going through. And so if you are not watching that or not being a part of that, and man, I, I promise you, there's so much good stuff we have there. Well, I was saying, as I was preparing for this, I said this, and then God said, <laughs> watch this. So I said, well, you know, it'd be nice if we came out of one of our supplemental books. So I thought, well, let's do that. And I was telling Miss Bonnie this today. And so I was like, yeah. I'm going to pull a fast one. And then our Sunday school material said, I'm going to pull a fast one too. Do you not know that our Sunday school material is in the same section that I'm preaching out of? It's in the same book. I'm in Daniel. It's in Daniel. It's in chapter one. Today we're going to be talking about chapter two. I think somebody's watching me. I gotta, I gotta see. Mm -hmm. I think somebody's watching me. I think they're picking my brain. But God wants us to talk about wisdom. And one of the most important things for us to ask today is where do you get your information from? Who are you listening to? Who are you getting that from? Um, as we go to read out of the book of Daniel, if you are able, uh, please stand as we get ready to read from the Word of God. We're going to be reading from chapter 2, and it's going to be chapter 2, verses 1 through 23. Again, this is Daniel chapter 2, verses 1 through um, one through 23. If you have to say amen. Amen. Wow, y'all are fast. All right. It's starting at verse 1. Now, in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. And his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. Then the king gave the command to call the magicians, the astrologers, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans to tell the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said to them, I had a dream. I have had a dream. And my spirit is anxious to know the dream. Then the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will give the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, My decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me and its interpretation, you shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made an ash heap. However, if you tell the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts, rewards, and great honor. Therefore, tell me the dream and its interpretation. They answered again and said, let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will give its interpretation. The king answered and said, I know for certain that you would gain time but you see, excuse me, because you see that my decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me, there is only one decree for you. For you have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me till the time has changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can give me its interpretation. The Chaldeans answered the king and said, there is not a man on earth who can tell the king the king's matters. The, the matter, excuse me. Therefore, no king, lord, or ruler has ever asked such things of any magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. It is difficult. It is a difficult thing that the king's request. Excuse me. That the king requests, and there is no other who can tell into the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this reason, the king was angry and very furious and gave the command to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. So the decree went out and they began killing the wise men and they sought Daniel and his companions to kill them. Then the counsel, uh, then with counsel and wisdom, Daniel answered Erach, the, ca uh, the captain of the king's guard, who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. And he answered and said, Erach, 
the king's captain, why is the decree from the king so urgent that Narak made the decision known to Daniel? So Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time that he might tell the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they might seek mercies from the God of heaven concerning this secret, so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. He moves kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might. You have now made known to me what we ask of you. For you have made known to us the king's demand. May God be praised and blessed by the reading of his holy word. You may be seated. Okay, I'm waiting for this one. Did I do this one, Miss Martha? Yes. I've done this one today. This new, I just did this one. Yeah, I finally got a new one. All right. Well, good morning. Good morning. Y'all don't know how happy that makes me right now, so I know I need to <laughs> preach more out of Daniel because I haven't done that one. Um, we have a beautiful day, amen? Amen. Yesterday, the sun was sun was shining behind the clouds. There was some thunder out there. I thought somebody was playing with some pots and pans out by my house. Um, Miss Bonnie was telling me that her dogs were scared. I told her, I said, shoot, you should have told your dogs. I was scared, too. I was in there hiding. I'm just kidding. I wasn't. I guess I was. I was hiding a little bit. I was a little scared. Sharon, I was a little scared. I was going to come to your house and hide, but I know you probably <laughs> left me out there. Point of the nature is, man, we had, a, we had a great day yesterday, didn't we? We're having a great day today, aren't we? Amen. Are you having a great day? I know I am, a little yep. bit. Uh, I'm having such a wonderful time with y'all, and this is a great time. One of the most important things that we come here today as we examine our text, and this is a question I ask, where do you get your information from? You know, a lot of times we get our information from some very, very interesting places and sometimes interesting people. You know, many times we consult our friends, our quote unquote friends. You know, you got them out there. Mm -hmm. You got those friends. You have acquaintances. You have your your uh, your quote unquote Cliff Clavins out there. Those are the town know it alls. They know everything that. Hey, I see the way you looked at me over there, Sharon. I don't know it all. Okay, I tried to, but I don't know. Okay. <laughs> we have our town know it alls. Our people that you know. No matter what happens, you can call them, and they're gonna have an answer for everything, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. They're gonna have one for you. And sometimes when you have that happen, you ask yourself this question. Hopefully, you should ask yourself this question. Is that information valid? Is that information valid? You ever stop and thought about that? When someone gives you information, do you just take it as the, it is what it is and that's it? Or do you actually go, you know what, I'm going to check that one. I'm, I'm going to fact check that and make sure that's good. Sometimes I have, sometimes I haven't. You know, the most unfortunate thing is, many times we ask people information, hoping, praying, thinking that they're going to give us the right information right off the bat, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But um, you know what ends up happening? They don't. 
So you gotta be careful when you're asking people for information. When you're asking people for, you know, this, that, and the third. And when I say this, that, and the third, I know what you're saying. Ooh, you know, they're just rolling and stuff. But listen carefully, this is what it means. When you're asking people for information, you're asking them to impart to you wisdom. To impart to you something that you might not know. Something that you might not actually have in your memory banks at that time. Mm -hmm. So you're asking somebody to impart to you information that you're seeking. And when you're seeking information, you know, one of the most important things we do is you seek and you shall find. You know, mm -hmm. Jesus said that. Seek and you shall find. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock, the door will be open. So we know that if we go to God and we ask of God, we're going to get the right answer, right? We know that, right? I don't hear nobody. I don't hear nobody. Mm. Okay, now I heard somebody. Hey, man, yeah. praise the Lord. I thought it was only me. But you know what? A lot of times we don't go to God for our answers. Mm -hmm. We don't go to him first. We'll go to everybody else, and God will be the last one we go to if we go to him at all. And it's a shame, really, isn't it? You want to know something? Would you, I, mean, see, I said that wrong. Would you like to know something? All right, check this out. So I was doing a little research, you know, trying to be smart out there, Captain Know It All again. And neurologists state, this is what they state. They state that many dreams are based off of information that your brain is not able to properly place. Also, they can be based off of the last information that was significant to you. Okay, significant to you. So it does not mean it's the last information you see but it's something that was significant to you. Now, I'm gonna tell y'all a story about a dream I had. Okay, I had a dream. I was with my cousins. My cousin Peter, Bernard, and Evans. His name is Charles, but we call him Evans. My cousins wanted to watch Night with the Living Dead. Mm. And I wanted to hang with the big boys. So I watched that movie. You know what was significant to me? I had nightmares. Mm. Why did I have nightmares? Because I tried to hang with the big boys. So the significant thing that I remember is I tried to hang with the big boys. I tried to watch the scary movies. And I had myself a little scary dream that I ended up sleeping with my mom and my dad in the bed. Why? Because I was that scared. Yes. And then I decided I was going to watch. Oh, man. oh brother. Oh. Mm. Come on, Bonnie, Sharon. I thought I was Mr. Big Dog. I thought I was. We was going to watch Friday the 13th. Why'd I do that? Why'd I do that? You know why? Because my cousins was watching. So I wanted to hang with my cousins. And we was all together. And we was watching it. And what did I end up having? You guessed it. Another scary dream, didn't I? I? Had another nightmare. Where was I? Inside the bed with my mom and my dad. I was too scared to sleep in my bed because I was afraid, what? He gonna come and get me. My mom told me, bless her heart, my mom told me, boy, ain't nobody coming to get you. That hurt, that hurt my soul. I want y'all to know that. I still, I still got my feelings hurt. I mean, my little heart was broken, okay? My little heart was broken. Just like that. It was broken. Why? Because I thought, you know, I thought, you know, I was cute. I thought I was, you know, I thought I was significant. <laughs> she ruined my world that day. But the point of the nature is that sometimes when you're going through and you get information, what's significant to you, listen carefully, what's significant to you may not be significant to me. What moves your heart may not move my heart. What things make you move don't make me move. But you know one of the things that we have to ask God to do? And this is important. Have you ever asked God, God, the things that mm -hmm. grieve your heart, make it grieve my heart. Hey, the things that give you joy, God, let it give me joy. Hey, the things that make you cry, God, let it give me joy.
that make me cry? Have you ever asked that before? That's a, that's a hard question. Have you asked that question before? Because if you ask that question, you know what God's going to give you? An answer. You know what the answer's going to be? Okay. Okay. He's going to give that to you. Okay. Hey, the things that make me happy, I'm going to let that make you happy. And the things that make me, that make me sad, I'm going to make sure that it makes you sad. You know the worst thing of all? You know the number one thing that makes God sad? When we sin. When we sin. You know why? Because he didn't want us to sin. He doesn't want us to do He doesn't even want us to go down that road. But you know what? You know what our excuse is? Lord, you know I'm not perfect. How many times have we said that? How many times have you said that this week? I did. Not perfect. Come on, we say that a lot, don't we? We sometimes say it to our friends. We sometimes say it to ourselves. We say it in our groups. Mm -hmm. We say it in our, in our emails. We say it everywhere that we go. And as we say this, we understand that, guess what? I'm not perfect. When I'm not perfect, hey, guess what? I got an excuse to do the things that I want to do, that I would like to do, that I don't feel right doing. And you know the thing? What did you pray and ask God to do? The same things that break your heart may break my heart. And guess what? When God is crying because what you're doing is breaking his heart, and we stand there going, God, why are you crying? And he goes, do you know what you did? And we go, I don't know. Do you understand now why God looks at us and goes, you special. You special. You know why we're special? Because we know what we're doing is wrong. We know what we're doing is wrong. But we still going to do it. Why are we going to do it? Because it's us. Because it's me. Well, let's look at our text today. Don't you like our text today? We're in chapter 2 with Daniel. And Daniel's a great book. Now, if you don't understand this particular book of Daniel, Daniel is actually written as the children of Israel are in exile in Babylon. Babylon is the world power of the day. They are the Dundadas of Dundadas. So when you look at world history and you say, this is important, because I know some people say this, and this is, this is very important. Do you know, did you know, that many of are, you remember the, the uh, Encyclopedia Britannica books? Mm -hmm. You know that? Do you know where they got most of their information regarding events and things of that nature? You know where they got it from? Right here. Mm -hmm. From your Bible. Why? Because God designed the Bible to be one of the most accurate and also the most impactful, informationally solid, and most intuitive books that you will ever read. Do you know that your Bible can give you so much information if you do just one thing? Read it. But you know the number one thing that we as Christians lack to do? Read it. Mm. And that's sad. You know, God gives us his word, his word, his word, him speaking to us. You know, we always go, God, speak to me, tell me what you want. We well, already did. It's in his book. But guess what we don't do? Read his book. So if we don't read the Bible, guess what we don't hear? We don't hear what God is saying. If we don't hear what God is saying, then guess what we don't know? His word, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, if you want wisdom, who should you go to? God, right? We should, right? Ah, right. But look. What happens if you don't do that? Well, as we looked into our text today, see what Nebuchadnezzar did? Nebuchadnezzar, what did he do? He had a dream, right? Now, I, I love to call King Nebuchadnezzar. We have a nickname for King Nebuchadnezzar in our Jeremiah study. That's King Nebi. So say that with me. King Nebi. King Nebi. King Nebi. King Nebi. Now, King Nebi, he's a cool king. He's a really cool king. You know why? He don't want no trouble. He want everybody to do what they supposed to do, right? He, you, he brought you in. He put you in a position. You said, you know what? I know how to read. I know how to sing. I know how to do this. And Nebuchadnezzar said, okay, you can do it. But when Nebuchadnezzar needs something and you're supposed to do it, what you're supposed to do? Do it, right? Mm -hmm. So look what Nebuchadnezzar does. So, okay, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And the spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. 
How many of you, your sleep has left you before? Yeah. You know, they have, they have a, a drug out there that I love so much, NIDOL. NIDOL helps you get your Z's. But if you ain't got no NIDOL, you ain't got no Z's. You just up, you just watching things, right? You just up, you have, there's a term for that. It's called insomnia, when you can't sleep. When you're up and you can't sleep. You want to sleep, but you are unable to sleep. So you gotta do things that will cause you to basically, to you just basically just pass out and get some sleep. But this is what's happening. So Nebuchadnezzar's having this dream, right? He's having this dream. Mm -hmm. And as he's having this dream, this dream is so intense, it's so impactful, it's so, it's so intellectually stimulating, it's got him so perplexed and he's trouble. I know I'm using all these big words out there. Now ask me to spell them, I probably can't. But the big thing is, is that these words are there. They're so perplexed, they got you going. And so Nebuchadnezzar is going through this, he's having this dream, and his dream is going and it's so impactful and it's got him so, so just stressed and so anxious and so, so on end because he doesn't, he doesn't get what this dream means. You know when you have a dream and you get that and you wake up, you're like, what was that? This is what Nebuchadnezzar is having. So he's having this dream. And as he's having this dream, he's now wanting this dream to be interpreted. He wants to know what the dream means. So he does what, hey, I got these guys, these wise guys, quote unquote wise guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask them. So what happened? So then the king gave the command to call the magicians, the astrologers, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans. So he just, he just went in and said, I'm gonna call up everybody. I'm going to call everybody. Mm. Folks, got a question? Mm. Got a very important question for you. You ready for it? Mm -hmm. Are you sure that you want to consult? everybody about what's going on in your life. Do you want to consult everybody about what's going on in your life? See, sometimes, folks, we got things going on in our life that are dynamic. World. We have things that are going on in our lives that can cause problems, issues. Sometimes there are circumstances that are going on in your life that you need sound advice from. You need sound advice. But sometimes the avenues that we go to and the people that we go to or that we consult, we expect to get good information from them because we know that said people are going to give you sound advice, right? If you're needing sound advice, you go to this person or you go to this person. And a lot of people today, guess what? They call Miss Cleo. Now, she's been dead for a while now. But back in the day, Miss Cleo called them now. He you free reading. Hey, people will hit up soothsayers or astrologers. They'll hit up, they'll hit up uh, you know, mystics, they'll hit up fortune tellers, <laughs> palm readers. Why? Because they want to know what's gonna happen in their life. They want to know what's going on in their life. They want to know these things. They want to know them. Why? Because they're 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 caught up on it. Do you realize that there are a lot of people that Should I even say this now? I'm kind of scared. Can, can, I, can I say it? Do you mind if I say this? Yeah. You, you know, we got a lot of Christians that before they even show up to church, they got to read their horoscope mm -hmm. before they even go to church. Hold on. They got to read their horoscope before they even go to church. Wait, before they pray, they got to read their 
horoscopes. That's astrology. Mm -hmm. That's a study of the stars. Study of, of, of signs. You know, every every birth, every uh, every every month, everybody's birthday falls within astrological signs. Mine happens to be, I'm a Pisces. Now you might say, what does that mean to me? Absolutely nothing. But to other people, it means everything. Remember what I said earlier? What matters to you may not matter to me. It may not matter to me. It may not be as significant to me. But this is something that is significant. Why? Because you don't think that, see, listen, oh, here we go, church, because I know there's going to be people that's going to be mad at me. I'm probably going to be excommunicated from the church, but it's okay. I'm going to share this truth right now. There are many people that, that believe in their horoscopes. Mm -hmm. They believe it. They believe in that more than they believe in the word of God. There are people that regularly will 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 look to their horoscope to see what their horoscope says in regards to their love life, in regards to how things are going to go during their life, in regards to their character, in regards to their design, in regards to their friends, in regards to everything that's going on around their life. So there are people that will consult these things and you really don't think that those little things you do are going to lead you straight to hell. Ooh, I said H-E double hockey sticks. Ooh. I know good and well there's some kids out there going, that pastor cussed it. I did. I said, a, I said a very, very bad word. You want to know why that's a bad word? Because none of us should ever go there, nor consult anything that's dealing with there. And guess what? Astrology is dealing with that. But come on, they can't hurt pastor. Don't you want to know what your sign says? Don't you want to know who you should marry regarding your sign? You know, they say that, right? They say that a certain sign should marry this sign because you have great compatibility. But if another sign marries a, a person outside of a sign, they usually run into issues and problems. You know what that means? Absolutely nothing. But to everybody else, it means something. It means something. It means something. Hmm. You know what God told us to do? Don't consult them. Ooh. 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 Hey, you want to know what Saul got in trouble for? Want to know Saul, King Saul, first king of Israel, you know what he got in trouble for? Didn't listen to God. Want to know one of the things he did? Samuel died. When you get to the 25th chapter of 1 Samuel, Samuel dies, right? You know what Saul does? He goes to a sorcerer. And he inquires of Samuel. Inquires of Samuel. He goes to a psychic and wants to speak to Samuel. Samuel's dead. Samuel's gone. He's gone, dead and gone. But you know what happened? Guess what? He spoke to Samuel. You know what happened because of that? That's right. He dies. Why does he die? Because he did what was wrong in the eyes of the Lord. He didn't listen to God. Mm -hmm. And everything that he had was taken from him. One, it was taken from him because he didn't follow the instructions as he was supposed to. But the second part of that was you had the audacity to go and inquire of who was the high priest. He died. And instead of you going to the current high priest, or inquire or going and pray, hitting your knees and praying to God and asking him for answers. Instead, you went to an actual medium to speak to Samuel to tell you what's going Really? Okay, maybe it's just me. 
Maybe y'all don't feel the same way that I do. But that sounds wrong, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Hey, guess what, folks? In our churches today, again, we got a lot of people that are doing some very, very dastardly things and that are seeking different things and don't think that, oh, that's not, you know, that's not so bad. You know what? I, hey, you know what? I think, I think that this not so bad. It's not so bad. Hey, your zodiac sign, it's okay. It's okay. Do Those are bad. Those are bad. Tarot cards. Those are horrible. Mm -hmm. Those are horrible. Why? Those are gateways. Mm -hmm. Oh, she threw another one out there. The Ouija board. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. You know good well. There's been a lot of people talking, hey, want to come over to my house? Okay. We don't mess with the Ouija board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of Christians that got stuff in their house that they shouldn't have. You shouldn't have that in your house. Don't have tarot cards in your house. Don't have a Ouija board in your house. Don't invite anything of that nature in your house. Why? Those things are the devil. That's the occult. Mm -hmm. It don't sound like it. that word sounds foreign. Guess why? Because it's not. It's not foreign. It's real. What's the real thing to it? It leads you to death. And it leads you away from where you need to be. If you're needing wisdom, who should we go to? God. God, right? Right. We should go to God. We should be seeking him. We should be asking of him. You know who you need to have in your circle of influence? People who follow after God, right? Isn't that right? Shouldn't we have people that are following after God? Yes. But why are those not the people that we talk to? Or correction. Sometimes we do talk to them. But you know what we do sometimes as Christians? Come on, I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. Sometimes we shoot from the hip. We shoot from the hip. We ain't not in one moment have we hit our knees, even if you don't hit your knees, we have not dropped our head and asked God, God, give me understanding, give me the words to speak to my fellow brother or sister regarding the situation that's going on. Instead, we go, girl, let me tell you, or brother, let me tell you, this is what you should do. Now look, the information you've given, hey, guess what? It's a 50-50 chance of it working, right? Could work, could not work. You know the one thing I know about God? Whatever God tells you to do is always going to work. Why? Because he never fails. And everything he gives you, everything he tells you is given to you for a purpose and it is given to you for your benefit. God tells you yes just as much as he tells you you got to be okay with hearing no. But you know what we know, Mike? No. Don't tell me no. Well, guess what? Listen to what Nebuchadnezzar heard. <laughs> no. Look, then the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic. See, they got, they, got, they got slick right there. They spoke to him in Aramaic. Now, even though that's the language that they spoke, but the way that they say this, so they spoke to him in Aramaic, like they was catching, you know, they was catching favor with him. You know, you could speak, you know, we have our broken English, you know how we do, we talk on our slang, we talk in our broken, mm -hmm. our comfortable words. But you know, when you get <clears throat> official in the way that you speak, in the way that you enunciate, in the way that you present your words. Well, they were talking in Aramaic. But this wasn't the normal Aramaic. Like, hey, King Nebi, how you doing? What up, Nebi? No. They were like, oh, King. May thou livest forever. We love thee. Oh. See, I'm going to pick, pick somebody right now. I'm going to pick Miss Martha. Martha. Oh, Miss Martha. You are one of the best piano players that we have here at Sierra Baptist Church. I heard that. 
That's so messed up. <laughs> Every time that you play on the piano, you allow the songs to take flight. Now, you can think I'm serious. Or there's a lot of y'all that's like, ooh, he need to stop. You just need to stop. But you know what? There's people out there that get caught doing this, right? They get caught in there. So the way that they're approaching the king, they're approaching the king, and they're trying to sound, listen, they're trying to sound official. But when they're coming to him, guess what they say? Okay, look. So they're like, all right, let's go look at it. All right, here we go. O oh, king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream. And we will give the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, My decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me and its interpretation, you shall be cut in pieces and your houses shall be made as an ash heap. Ooh, that's cold. If you don't make my dream what I dreamed, if you don't tell me what my dream means, I'm going to cut you into pieces and I'm going to burn your house down. That's what he said. I'm going to kill you and burn your house down. Ooh. Mm. That's pretty bad. Yeah. Pretty bad, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we're inquiring of people, for information, for knowledge. We're expecting them to tell us the truth, to tell us what it is that we need. And sometimes you gotta be careful because the people that you consult, you think that they know what's going on in your life, but guess what? If you just tell them what's going on in your life, they'll be able to tell you the situation. I wanna tell you something right now. You know, one of, you know one of the biggest issues today? This is one of the biggest issues. You know something we don't do a lot of? Pray. You know why we don't pray? Because, you know, it's sometimes we, you know, you have a lot of folks that say, well, I pray. I pray independently. But you get a group of people or you say, hey, we got prayer requests. And it's like, can you tell us the, the, the prayer requests? I'm like, can I just, can I just share with y'all something? Can I truly share with y'all something? You know, the number one thing that I tremendously dislike, I wanted to say, hey, but I just really, really dislike, you know, I really dislike unanswered prayer. I have an unanswered prayer. I know why you're saying you have an unanswered prayer. I know why. I know why. And you know why people are saying unanswered prayer? Because unfortunately, prayer is supposed to be a time when we as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ lift each other up. Concerns, issues, things that are, are hard hurting upon our heart, that are heavy upon our heart, that are burdening us, this is when God tells us those things that are burdens to you, mm -hmm. those things that are causing you to stumble, give them to me. Are you talking about unspoken or unanswered prayer? Unspoken. Thank you. Okay. When you say it unspoken, oh, that gets my ass nerve. You know why? Because when I pray, I want to pray specifically for what the issue is. But I know sometimes people can't share that information. They may not be able to share that information. So you know what I do? Go to the person. And I ask you about it. And ask that person, hey, can you tell me what's going on so I can speak for this specifically? But unfortunately, hey, this is another issue where the church has fallen down on the job. Instead of us being agents of prayer, people that are taking, you know, you know, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, 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 oh Lord, that's standing in the need of prayer. Instead of us being people that are committed to lift up those things that are burdens upon our hearts to God in prayer, instead, what are we doing? Shh, let me tell you about the latest juicy gossip that's going on here. Instead of our churches being healthy, helping locations, they have become hurtful dens of gossip. Now do you understand why people don't speak their prayers? Unspoken prayers? I have an unspoken. I have two unspokens. I have three unspokens. I have five unspokens. 
what you even open your mouth for? Mm -hmm. What you open your mouth for? God already knows the situation that's going on. That's true. God knows the situation that's going on, but I don't. You know why it's important for us to share what's going on? If you have your Bible, turn to James chapter 5, verse 16. And I know what you're saying. Well, let me go to James. I went too far. I went to Revelation. Y'all help, help me now. James chapter 5, verse 16. James is that book mm -hmm. that if you, if you read James, I'm going to promise you this. James is officially the one that will cause you to go, go out to the street and he will punch you right in the mouth. So James is that book that if you read this book, he's going to tell you straight to your face. Listen to what James says in chapter 5, verse 16. He says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayers of a righteous man avails much. Wow. What is that saying? Confess your sins to one another and do what? And pray for one another, right? Mm -hmm. Fervently. We're to pray for one another. That means that we're not called to gossip about what you're talking about and we're not called to be out there real messy about what's going on, but that we're supposed to carry those things that are heavy in your heart in prayer to God, right? Mm-hmm. But the most unfortunate thing is is that many people have had their heart broken because of the fact of that very thing in prayer. Because the very people that they may cherish and that they may think is significant that I can share these things with in confidence and know that, hey, this is going up in prayer and that you're praying for me. Instead, it has turned in to where they have become pariahs in their own churches, communities, and lives by the very people that they care about. That's a shame. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's a shame. That's not what we're called to do. That's not what we're called to be. We are called to be above reproach. We are called to be the church, not talk about it. Now, when we do talk about it, we're to talk about it in a good light, right? Right. We're not to be gossiping. We're supposed to be sharing the truth of who Jesus is, but unfortunately, that's not what we're doing. It's not what's happening here. Nebuchadnezzar made it a point. And he said, hey, you got to tell me what's going on. So you know the most interesting thing about this? The most interesting thing about this is, is that he goes up to the astrologers. He goes up to, to, you know, his mystics. He goes up to the sorcerers. He goes up to the wise guys that he has there. And he tells these wise guys to tell him his dream, to make his dream known to him. And you know the one thing about when you go to a fortune teller or you go to anyone of that nature, you, they got to coax out of you your own fortune. You realize that? You ever notice that? Oh, what's your name? You're supposed to know my name. You're a fortune teller. I came here. You're supposed to know me. I'm psychic. You're supposed to know everything. You're supposed to know who I am before I even get there. So that already tells me you, you don't know me. Uh, I see something. I see something too. A high bill. But you know what? We, we have people that fall head over fist over stuff, that they are constantly going after this and they're thinking that all these things are what they need. God, folks, I want to tell you something right now. Be careful of who you're consulting. Be careful of who you're listening to. Be careful of whose information you follow. Because sometimes they can lead you down the wrong path. <clears throat> You want to hear the most unfortunate? Even in the church. You got to be careful. Because not every person that you call brother or sister in Christ is really your brother or sister in Christ. You know the number one thing we as believers need to do? And I, I make this practice every day I come here. I never assume that every person that comes through these doors is a Christian. I never do. You know why? Because that's the most dangerous thing to do. Because if you assume that everybody that walks through your door is a Christian, then you're giving them the benefit of the doubt. And you know the one most unfortunate thing is, if that person dies, guess what? They go into hell for the benefit of the doubt. Do you want that to happen? No, 
I don't want that to happen. So I treat each person like they don't know. That's why when I preach, I preach in a way so that God's word is revealed and is shown to be true. That you understand and know what God's word says. You see, this is one of the most important things. Look what happened. Nebuchadnezzar wanted to know his dream. So he went and he consulted the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of the quote unquote wise. And he went to these people and he said, hey, tell me what's going on in my dream. Make my dream known to me. Tell me, interpret my dream. Let me know what's happening here because this is something that has me caught. This is something that has me distraught. This is something that has me just, just flummoxed right now. It's got me just, I'm just, I'm stuck right now. I need to know what this is. And the people that he's going to can't tell him the dream. Folks, I want to tell you something right now. There's a lot of people that we go to that we think are going to be able to tell us everything about what's going on in our lives. We think that they're the people that have all the information there is, even within your church. You may think that that person got all the information, got everything figured out, their life is right, and it's not. Mm -hmm. I don't follow the person that I think got all the answers. I'd rather follow the person that I know has all the answers. I'd rather follow the one that I know has all the answers. That's God. I'm going to follow Christ. You know the problem when you're following after people? People fail you. People lead you astray. The most hurtful, the most damaging thing that happens within the church is when members of the church hurt members of the church. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the most hurtful thing. It's the most damaging thing. Why? Because you don't expect that to happen within the church. You don't expect that your fellow brother and sister that you say, hey, brother, hey, sister, love you so much. Mm. You don't expect them to be the same one that's stabbing you in the back, that's doing things behind you, that, that's, out to, you know, that's out there to destroy you. You're not expecting that. You're expecting to be loved and cared for. But what happens when you're not loved and cared for? Well, then you know what happens? You get hurt. Saddest thing that happens is when it starts from the pulpit to the very last pew. If your pastor does it, guess what you'll do? Exact same thing. If your pastor leads you to do it, then you'll do it. You know, know some church? You know, they always say that you can never teach an old dog new tricks. I'm going to tell you that that's a myth. You want to know why? Because sometimes congregations teach pastors. If your pastor walked in and they have a relationship with God that's real and personal, but in order to curry favor with the members of the congregation, this is the question that you asked earlier in Sunday school. We are willing to compromise our character and our actions in order to equal or meet those that are around us. When you do something that compromises your character and your standing, and that means that sometimes, guess what? Not everybody in your congregation has a relationship with Jesus Christ. Many people in your, in, in, your, in your congregation may have a relationship with the world and their wisdom comes from the world, which means that as a pastor, this is how sometimes, unfortunately, words and actions and deeds and things that are prevalent in the world can sometimes make their way right out of the mouth of your pastor. Don't tell me you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Because when your pastor starts spewing those things that are not gospel, but is hot garbage and expecting it to be gospel, and if what you're hearing from your pulpit is hot garbage and not, his, and not God's gospel, then guess what? That's not where you need to be. It's not where you need to be. One of the things that I totally stand firm on is the fact that God's word is God's word. And you can, I can promise you this, you will always hear me preach from God's word about God's word. I'm not going to preach about something that, well, you know what, uh, if you hug a tree and look to the universe, 
everything mm -mm, that ain't coming out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. If it does come out of my mouth, y'all have all permission to beat the snot out of me. Look, I see somebody online right now. I start first. But look, sometimes we compromise our feelings. We compromise our beliefs because of it. Folks, in closing, I want to share something with you right now. I want you to listen closely and listen carefully. King Nebuchadnezzar wanted to know his dream. He wanted to know his dream. He had something that was pondering him that was that was causing him to stumble, something that could have been detrimental to his life, and he wanted to know the interpretation of it. But the people that he consulted, they couldn't tell him the truth. They could only tell him the information that they had, and the information that they had is limited. Church, I want to tell you something today. The world is looking to us for answers. They want us to interpret their dream. They want us to tell them what's going on in their life. If we're not consulting the word of God, then we're standing in front of those people and we're telling them, if you tell me your dream, I'll be able to tell you the interpretation. But you know that God has given you the ability to interpret dreams. That God has given you the ability to understand visions, you know why? You know how? It's very simple. You pray and you ask God, God, give me the words to speak. Help me to understand. Lord, as I go into this time of speaking with these individuals or to these people, Lord, give me the words to speak. You guys, I, I, I just want to share this with you. Do you understand why? If you listen to the prayer that I that I pray before I start preaching or before we go through any class setting. Do you understand why I always pray this line? Lord, remove me right out of the way and speak to your people. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Do you know who's included in that? Me. I'm a servant of the Lord just as much as you're a servant of the Lord. And guess what? I want him to leave me out of the way. Why do I want him to move me out of the way? Because I want God to speak so clearly, so fully, so directly to you that you hear what his word says. But you know where that has to start from? From the pulpit to the very last pew. See, the pastor cannot be exempt from hearing the word of God. Can't be exempt. I got to hear it too. Some of the greatest messages that you'd be like, Pastor, that was one of the greatest messages that you ever preached. You know who's the first one to say, Lord, that was the greatest message that you ever gave is your pastor. Should be. Want to know why? Because when God is speaking to me or speaking to you, he's sometimes speaking to me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you go like, you know what? That message was kind of lacking. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel no oomph in that one. That's because that wasn't for you. But that also means this, you gotta check the way that you came in, right? Because you know what happened at the end? As I said, that was the last thing we are gonna talk about and this is the most important part. Do you know what Nebuchadnezzar did to all those that couldn't interpret the dream? He killed them and he burned their house down. Folks, I wanna tell you something. The world is looking for people that have wisdom, <clears throat> true wisdom, that speak wisdom Oh, my friends, we are called to speak wisdom in life. We're called to. But if we do not speak wisdom in life, you know what the world will do to us? Kill us. Burn our houses down as if it never knew us. That was the purpose of what he meant. That's what he meant. Cut you into pieces and burn your house down means that you don't exist anymore. Because you're not able to do the very thing that I've called for you to do. Hmm. Acts 1.8 says that you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, 
in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. We are called to be God's witnesses. We are called to speak his wisdom, not our wisdom, his wisdom. So you know what we need to ask God? God, allow my wisdom to be your wisdom. Lord, speak through your servant. Let my words not be my words, but let them be your words that flow through me. Do you know what God will do? He'll answer that prayer. He'll answer that prayer. But he answers those prayer. He answers that prayer through those that have a relationship with him. If you don't have a relationship with him, guess what? He'll still speak to you. But he'll speak to you through somebody else. But if you want to be used by God to do the work that he has for you to do, my friends, I'm going to tell you, it all starts in one place and one way. When you choose Jesus today. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for another wonderful day and thank you for the many blessings that you give. And Father, as we look into your word, study your word, and Father, are learning from it. God, I pray, dear God, that Lord, those that are needing to know you today, I pray that in their hearts and lives, God, that they will surrender and submit to you today. Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord, that they would just fall in love with you. Lord, that your word would become everything in their life. And God, that, Lord, you would just allow those things to flow from their life. Lord, with everything we have, we give you praise, honor, and glory because we know that you are able to do all things. And I ask right now in Jesus' holy name, Lord, that you would touch hearts and lives today. Father, there are those that need to make a decision for you, and I pray, God, that they would make that decision today. I pray that they would drop everything they're doing and saying, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm saved. I know that I've done wrong. I know that I'm doing things my way instead of doing them your way. And Lord, I ask today that you forgive me for where I fail, that you come into my life, become Lord and Master of my life. Thank you, God, for saving me. For it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Father, I know there's somebody that's prayed that prayer. And Lord, I thank you for something like it. And Father, I know that today, today, Lord, their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. God, I pray that, Father, we would be deemed worthy, not by anything we have done, but what you have done through us. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for his sake.